to go to the Word of God. First of all, you may be seated. Um, I want to give honor to our pastor. Praise God. And I give honor to Elder Williams. And I give honor to the saints of the Most High God. Truly, God is good. And he is worthy of all the glory. He is worthy of all the honor. And he is worthy of all the praise. And I praise him today. I thank God for our mothers. And I solicit your prayers that you pray for me on today. I told someone earlier that Satan have been fighting me for this word all this week. Even up until the point that I walked out the office. I had everything typed and ready to go. And would you know nothing worked. Would not print, would not save, but God. I thank God for the word of God. I thank God for the word of God. Because one day, one day, the devil is going to take this from us. But we got to have it in our hearts. So I may not say it like I want to say it. But I got the word of God. The word of God is a lamp to my feet. The word of God is a light to my path. And I am not going to fear whatever the enemy has said or tried to say or is trying to do. I got the word of God. And when nothing else could help, I can go to the rock. I can go to this word of God. Praise God. Because it is my life. I want to thank God for all of you all coming. As you know, it is my choice just to come before you once a year that's my choice amen that's my choice and i call it my annual address and i'm going to do the best that i can today all right, all right. with my annual address i was going to tell you what my annual address was all about you know but you know the president every year he come before you with his annual address amen He's coming up pretty soon, isn't it? It's coming up in January. He's coming up with his annual address. He has something to talk to us about, and it's something that he wants us to help him with and to adhere to. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to try to do nothing less. As this, uh, my laptop, treat me right. <laughs> It is something God put into my heart to speak to Great Open Door and to those who are listening by way of internet or some other means, but especially to Greater Open Door. God gave me a scripture, but I wasn't sure which way he wanted me to go with it until the Holy Spirit showed me in a dream. Look at somebody say, she's a dreamer, y'all. I am a dreamer. Of course, I want to be obedient and submissive to what the Lord gave the shepherd of this house, our pastor, Dr. Garen Hardin, so as not to be div divided. The thing God gave to me is to, and it's, I'm going to follow right into Pastor Hardin's um, a thing, making God's agenda ours. Amen. I am not going to deviate from that. Uh, he said, uh, live in expectancy this year. That's what he said, amen. Live in expectancy. And I'm going to take a sidebar and say I thank God for Sister Mitchell and her daughter. We have been praying for you, and I was looking for your number on yesterday to call, but we didn't have the number. I didn't have the number in the directory to call you, but we're glad to see you today. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for Sister Monique as well. So we're going to make greater open door agenda is to make God agenda ours. Amen. 
Amen. In order to make God's agenda ours, we must know what his agenda is. First of all, we need to know what constitutes an agenda. An agenda is a list, a plan, an outline, or the likes thereof. To things to be done, things to be done, matters to be acted or voted upon. Amen. It's that time. Amen. Praise God. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Jesus gave us his agenda. Amen. So in order to keep an agenda, we got to know what the agenda is. Amen. So as to keep that agenda. Praise God. So in Matthew 28, 19, and 20, Jesus gave us agenda, which is a list of things to be done. He said, go ye therefore. Go ye. And who is ye? Ye. He told them, go ye. He was talking to the disciples. He's telling us, go ye. This is what he's telling us today. Go ye therefore. Teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. And then he says, Amen. That settles it. Amen. This is it. It is so. It is to be. Use as a prayer, a creed, or other formal statement to express solemn ratification or agreement. It is so. Very truly. God's agenda is that in, 20, in Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20. When he was speaking to his disciples and he told them to go. So we told you in Jen there's a list of things, amen? Uh -huh. So we have three things in this, these two verses that he said us to, to do. Yeah. To go into all the world. Yeah. To go is to move, to proceed, or, or to proceed to or from something. To leave a place, to depart, to keep or be in motion. You may or may not be able to go physically. But you can support someone else that can go. Amen. You may not, we may not be able to go physically. But we can support someone else that can go by, praise God, giving our tithes and our offering. Amen. The second list of things is teaching all nations. We are commanded to go, to move from where we are to move, to go somewhere. We can go across the street. We can go to countries far and near, but we gotta go. That's a command. We gotta move. We can't stand still. We cannot sit on these pews and go. We gotta get out of these four walls and go. Hallelujah. Praise God to where God is telling us to go. And we, since we have a pastor, we're going to follow his lead, amen? amen, because we have a shepherd, amen? amen, and the shepherd is to lead and to feed, amen? amen, that's what his job is, amen. but we are to go teach all nations, implying, imp we are to impart knowledge or skills in, to give instruction to, amen, amen, you may not be a teacher, but you can help someone else that has the gift of teaching to teach, amen, amen. Amen. You can support. He said for us to go baptize. Baptize is to submerge or emerge in water. Baptism is to emerge or submerge in water. To administrate baptism, we are called to be baptized and to work with the ministry who believes in baptizing in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. That covers everyone that says you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, therefore. No, therefore we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because that's what Jesus said, not what the disciples said 
That's what Jesus said and said again. We're going to follow his agenda. Also, in Matthew, these three things is what the church is commanded to do. They are his agenda. These are his agendas. These are not the only commandments, but from my perspective, they are the first things that we should focus on before we do anything else. Let's do what the Lord said for us to do. Amen, church? Amen. In Matthew 6 and 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness is virtue. It's being just. It's being upright. It's being good and honorable. Hallelujah. It's being honest. It's being living an exemplary life. Noble. Trustworthy. Just to name a few. Look at someone and tell them, Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Like the days of old when he called Moses by the burning bush. He told him to take off his shoes for he was standing on holy ground. He called Jeremiah as a long yet lad and told him to go to give Eli, Eli the prophet, a word from him, Jehovah, and all the other prophets before him and ask and after him. He sent some to the nations, some to the government, some to their own homes to get their house in order. Christ at the beginning of his ministry called 12 disciples and he gave unto them his agenda to go into every city, preach the word, preach it in season, preach it out of season, preach it when they want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Praise God. Teach all nations and baptize them and to make disciples of them. He sent them to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit those in prison, just like he did. Back then, he is doing, he wants us to do the same thing today. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is immutable. He cannot change. I heard him saying, Matthews again, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Lay your yoke upon me and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Jesus is calling you. Isaiah 6 and 8, 9 says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I go? Whom, saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Oh, my God. This was in the day of Isaiah. When Isaiah 6 and 1 say, in the, king, in the year the king Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. He was high and he was lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Oh, my God, his skirts. And I can just imagine, oh, my God, as Isaiah was in there, he had been around the church. He had seen his Uzziah, Uzziah, and he had seen what Uzziah was doing. Uh -huh. But in that year that he died, uh -huh. sometime in order for us to see Jesus, somebody have to die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm going to say that we are the first one that have to die. Right. We got to die ourselves and our self-will and our self-motivation. We got to die out of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We got to die. Yeah. We got to die daily, Paul say. Yeah. Oh, and take up your cross and follow him. Yeah. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Jesus is calling you. Yeah. And he's calling me. Yeah. He's calling us to work out our soul salvation yeah. with fear. And with trembling, Jesus is calling. Is there anybody here today that hear the voice of the Lord calling you out of darkness 
He said, come out from among them and be separated, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean things. Come on out from lying. Come on out from stealing. Come on out from backbiting. Come on out from whoremonging. Come on out from fornication. Come out. Ah, glory, 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 glory. Come out. Ooh, glory, 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 glory. He wants to be first place in your life. First seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness, not ours. And the only way we can find out about his righteousness is to go to the book. And it will tell us what his righteousness is. His virtue, his heart. Oh, my God. He wants us to be real with him. Oh, my God. He don't want us to trust in ourselves. The scripture says, trust in the Lord with all that heart. And lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge the ways and all the Lord in all your ways. And he shall direct your path. He's calling you. And he's calling me. Not for our glory. A lot of times we come and we do things. But we're doing it for selfish motives. Oh my God. We're not doing it as unto the Lord. Oh, my God. A lot of times we want great open door. We want people to look at us. Oh, how do I know? Hallelujah. Mm. Every time you do something, you got to post it on Facebook. Oh, you want a following. You want somebody to follow you. But that's not what the scripture said. Oh, my God. We ought to follow Jesus. Oh, God. Because Jesus is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. No man can come to the Father except by Jesus Christ. Oh, God. They ought to look on us. But when they look on us, they got to see Jesus. They got to see Jesus. Because it's not us. We can't do nothing of ourselves. But we trust in Jesus. When I sing, I'm singing because Jesus has did something for me. When I pray, I'm praying for what Jesus has done for me and is doing for me. When I speak, I'm speaking not of myself, but what Jesus said. I can only give you what he says. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look on us. That's what the disciples said. Look on us. Silver and gold I don't have. But such as I have, I'm going to give it to you. Everything I got, I give it to you, Lord. Because I want them to see Jesus. Woo. Who? 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 Who will go for us? And who can we send? This is the Father head. This is Elohim speaking. This is the Father. Oh God, Jehovah. Oh God, Jireh. Oh God, our provider. This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God which taking away the sins of the world. This is the Holy Ghost all getting together and saying, who, whom can we send? Oh, and who will go for us? Who will go? Oh, my God. Isaiah said, then said I, he am I, send me. But guess what? Isaiah had some issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo. He said, after he saw the train of the Lord and the glory of the Lord in the temple, when he saw the glory of the Lord shining all around him, he saw the seraphims. Oh, God, all of them had with face, with two wings, they covered their feet. With their feet, two wings, they covered their face. And with two eyes and with two wings, they did fly. 
And then they heard a voice. And the voice said, who? And when the voice spoke, the whole house shook as the mountain shook. Oh, God, when the children of Israel said, Moses, we don't want to hear you. We want to hear God. And God stepped out on the mountain. And the mountain began to reel and rock. Oh, God, like someone taking a cradle and rocking a baby. And they said, oh, no. Rocks begin to fall. Mountain begin to skip. And they said, oh, no, Moses. We don't want to hear God. We'd rather hear you. Because God keep on speaking. He's going to mess up something around here. He's going to tear us up. He's going to kill us. So they said, I'll hear you, Moses. And, I, and Isaiah said, Whoo, oh, woe is me. I'm undone. I can't do it. I'm not qualified to do it. Woe is me. We got to say within ourselves, Woe is me. I am undone. I dwell among men of unclean lips. They talking stuff that they don't know. And they saying stuff that they know, don't know. But I, oh God, then he said, who there flew a, one of them with a cold. And he touched my lips. And when he touched my lips, oh, that was cleansing him. That was purging him. That was making him available for the word of God. And for God to use him. Oh, God. Oh, God. He said, here am I. Send me. Woo, God. God is saying today, who will go for us? And who can I send? Who is going to stand in the gap? Who's going to stand when all hell break loose and say, I love the Lord with all my heart. I'm going to hold my position. I'm not going to let go of anything that I believe in. No matter what the world say, no matter what the president say, no matter what orders that they give, no matter if they say this is right, I know within whom I believe. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who came to wash me, to cleanse me, to separate me from my sin. He said, if I sanctify myself, he will sanctify me holy. Oh, praise God. Who will go and who can I send in this congregation? Who will go and who, will, who can I send? Who will stand like Isaiah did? God said for him, set your face like a flint. A flint is a rock. Set your face like a flint. Don't you move for nothing. Regardless what come or may, don't you move for nothing. Hold your position. Some of you men know when the coach give the, give the call for what to stand on, they got to hold their position. Don't move because they know if they move, the opposition is going to be able to come through with that pig skin and get through and make a touchdown. But he tell the offensive and he tell the defensive, hold your position. Don't let the devil get in here. Don't let that opposing opponent get in here. Don't let the devil captivate our mind and our hearts. But get hold your position and hold on to the Lord. He said, if you hold on to me with clean hands, you will grow stronger and stronger. It's not by might. It's not by power. But God said, it's by my spirit, said the Lord God Almighty. Woo! Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Who? Who? Is going to stand fast. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith we have been called. We've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. God's word is not going to change. He said it will last. Heaven and earth may pass away, but he said, but my word, my word, you can stand on the word. Oh, just like Sister Andrew said, the word of God is right. It's not going to leave. Heaven and earth may pass, but it's word. But it's word. It's word. Say which way we 
me to go. His word. There are a lot of ways when people come up to you and they say, oh, you serving God? We serving Buddha. We serving Allah. We serving this one. We going the same way. That's a lie. Isaiah 40 said, there's a way. Uh, the same right up to me. But the end of is death. Oh, my God. There's a way. There's one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Can't nobody come to the Father. You can't deviate Jesus Christ. He's not to be deviated because he is the only begotten son of God that was sent to save his people. Oh God, to deliver us from death, hell, and destruction. Jesus Christ is the only way. Stand on the word of God. Stand flat footed. If they knock you down, get up and stand again. There's a highway, and it shall be called the way of holiness. No ravenous beast. No one that's not living, anyone that's not living a holy life cannot make it. But those of us, we're wayfaring, wayfaring, called out, called on, called to be picked out, called to be picked on. Hey. Woo! Hey! Hey! Devil don't like us. They don't like us. At your job, they can't stand you. They think you're a know it all. They think you're good at two shoes. But you know, you're none of that. Some of your family folks think you're too good to associate with them. That's not it. I got my mind made up. And I won't turn back. I'm going to see my Jesus someday. I got my mind made up. And my heart is, come on. As I'm going to see my Jesus someday. Goodbye world. Stay no longer with you. Good night, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. Sometimes my mom would be in the house doing whatever she was doing. And I can recall days that I would run in the house just like Samuel. I think it was Samuel. Because I would hear somebody calling me. And he called me by my nickname. And I heard him when he called me. And I run in the house to see what my mama said. And she said, Betty, I didn't call you. I'm like, okay, go back outside. Here's somebody calling me again. Run in the house and say, Mama, you called me? No, Betty, I didn't call you. I'm like, all right, go on outside and play. But I want to say to us today, Jesus is calling us. I'm getting ready to wrap this up. Jesus is calling us. In Isaiah, Isaiah name means salvation. Salvation is to be saved, is to be delivered. Oh God, it's to be delivered. Oh God, from uh, damnation. Eternal damnation. And I'm going to say again, Jesus is calling. In Isaiah 118, the word says, the Lord says to 
the people of that time. And he's saying to us today, come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And he says, if, oh my God, if, oh my God, if you be willing and obedient. This is conditional. It's conditional. If you be willing and obedient, you shall, not maybe, you shall eat the good of the land. Whew. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. What are these things? All of those clothes, all those shoes, all the houses, all the land, whatever your heart desire, just seek me first. Then when you seek me first, you're going to get everything else. But just seek me first. And when you're focusing on my agenda and what I want, then you do that. We think we don't have no more time for ourselves. But, oh, yeah, we have plenty of time. And, and when we do what he says, he may have us to eat the good of the land. I'm going to tell this on myself. There was one time I was having a hard time praying, paying tithes because we weren't doing so well. And I had one son that would turn over his shoe every month. I ain't, I ain't called no name. I got three of them. <laughs> Every month, he'd turn over them shoes, had to go back and get shoes all on the top of his foot. I'm just like, how did that shoe get like that? So, <laughs> it was no money to buy him shoes every month. He would turn them over in about two weeks, so in a month, I had to get him some because they was on the top of his feet. They had rough skin jeans. On a personal note, all three of them. And they had patches on top of patches on top of patches. I didn't know what my daughter found out when her started coming along with the tough skin. That if they don't go out, outgrow them. If they tear them up before they outgrow them, they can get a whole new pair. That sure would have made them feel a lot better going to school with double patches on their clothes. But we didn't have it. And I was having issues uh, bringing my tithes. And I, the Lord let me see and show me that every time, not my husband, he always paid his. But I, when I did work, I didn't want to pay mine. <laughs> Tell on yourself, amen. <laughs> Tell on yourself. So I'll take it and spin it, and then God take it back. And I had to spend a whole lot more on fixing this, car breakdown, refrigerator, washing machine, everything started breaking down, so God started getting his. I said, okay, I give up. Some people are hard to understand. I'm like, God, you don't have to say no more. I get it. So when I start making Big money from my book, I'm a country girl. I started paying my tithes. And the Lord wouldn't let stuff break down, the car break down, need some new tires, transmission, a holes go wrong. Just do what you're supposed to do. Amen. 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 So I learned from that. And I'm coming in. I learned from that. That when God called us to do something, he means for us to do just that. Yes, he does. Just that. Yes. Just what he called you. He didn't ask you to do no, no more. He just, whatever he called you yes. to, that's what he yes. wants you to do. Yes. If you're a singer, sing. sing. If you're a preacher, preach. Yes. You are an evangelist. You go and do what God said do because God is calling you. 
and me to use the gifts or gift. If you only have one, you can only use one. But God has given us all a measure of faith. He's given us all a measure of faith. He's given us all a gift or several. But we need to use one of those gifts to his glory and for the edifying and for the building up of the body of Christ. Now, if you know you can't sing, that's not your gift. Amen? That's not yours. But he's calling all of us in here. This is what the Lord gave me for greater open door. He's calling us. 1 Peter 1, 14 and 16 says, As obedient children, not fastening, fashioning yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Yes, lifestyle that we got a total mark. We shouldn't be preaching and saying stuff that we're not doing. If you're not living up to something, ask God to help you. He's calling you out. Isaiah 4, 55, and I believe it's 6, says call on the Lord. He tell us to call on him, and he will answer us, amen, in a time that we know not of, but he wanted us to call him, amen, I'm going to read it. Isaiah 55 and 8, because I may not be saying it right. He says, 6 says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God is calling us. He's calling you to come out of darkness into the marvelous light. For those of you just kind of sitting straddle the fence, some sitting on the fence, you got to get off the fence. You got to get away from straddle the fence. You need to be on the Lord's side. You need to be on the Lord's side. Hallelujah and you will begin to see the blessings of the Lord. You need to submit yourself unto God. Because we can't live this life by ourselves. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. Jesus is calling. We need Jesus to help us to be saved. Isn't that wonderful? He came. He paid the price for our sins. He paid the price yes, for our sins. Thank you, Lord. And all he says for us to, in Romans 12 and 1, <coughs> is present your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is just your reasonable service. Don't be conformed. Don't be like the world. But be ye transformed. Oh, God, by the renewing of your mind. Our minds need to be renewed so we're not walking after the fleshly things, but we're walking after the things that please God. Jesus is calling you. Those of you that have gifts of administration, we need you. Those of you that need to, that, that feel like you don't know what your gift is, why don't you go talk to Brother Dale? He's the president of the Ursa Department. Right. He needs help. Yeah. Why don't you go talk to stand up Brother Dale so everybody can see you? Yeah. You need to go to Sister Dale. She's a greeter. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. You see, they get time to sit down. We, she needs you. Amen. Greater Open Door needs you. Yeah. Everybody that's sitting down in here that have a gift of singing, you need to be over there. Everybody, you know that you are a praiser and you are a worshiper, you need to be over there. You're not going over there to tell them how to run the program. Brother Johnson King is the president over the choir. Go talk to him. So 
Sister Betty Tram Robbins, stand up. She's the president of the Mother's Boy. Now, if you're 65 and older, you need to be on that seat over there. Nice seats with handles on it. Amen. And Sister Carmichael, she is, Sister Betty Robbins is helping Mother Miller. Mother Miller is the Mother's Boy president, but Sister Robbins is her helper. And also, Sister Carmichael, while Sister Miller is recuperating, amen. Yeah. But I said go to Sister Betty because she's the one that's helping the mothers and orchestrating all the business part. Yeah. So she'll hurl you up, get you on over there. Yeah. Or get on, pull your dress down yeah. below your knees. <laughs> Don't nobody want to see them anyway. <laughs> Get on the mother's board. All you men that have good reputation, your hands are not sticky. The deacons need you to help them. Hey, everybody, don't know what your gift is? Go to the porters. This is my annual dress. I shout at you. There's no more shout coming. Praise God. Everybody that want to help on the parking lot, park the porters. Elder Pastor Rob is going to be waiting on you. Everybody hey, that want to teach and can teach, have the gift of teaching, stand up our Sunday school teacher, president over the Sunday school superintendent. Get yourself right and come on over here and talk to me or talk to her. All right? Sister People, stand up. Sister People, she handled the sacred things. If your life isn't holy, you don't want to touch that because you will die. Get yourself together. Everybody else don't know what to do, come to me and I'll help you out. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody that have the gift of evangelism, what did God say? Go. He said go. He's calling us to go, to move. You got a gift? You want to help? Here we are. Let's get busy with helping. Hey, praise God. Everybody that have the gift of hospitality, that loves smiling, and serving. We need you. Amen. If you can cook and decorate, that would help out a whole lot. We need school teachers to come and help these children that we have that you don't have time for to teach them how to read, write, and when my day was arithmetic. But you know what I'm talking about. There are some people in here that has calculus experience. I don't know what it is. don't know what it looked like. But I know one thing. He didn't call me to do it. I'm doing what he called me to do. All of you that have gift with children, we need you. We need you to set up our youth department and our children department. Amen. We need you. What's the word? Jesus is calling you to work on his agenda and not ours. God bless you.